Good evening, everybody. This is Chrissy from Solstice ATR and Vulcan Capital Research. I will be covering for September 5th, the coming week, the market outlook. If you like us, do hit the subscribe button. And let's first start by taking a look at the weekly chart. I don't have it set up here. First of all, just to go over the overall trend and technicality from three years ago where the trend was supposed to be started. I have an up channel here that I have drawn and I connected it to the nearest high. And we eventually touched, looked above it on the weekly chart and came back in to close inside the prior candle. But we looked below it, but we stayed in the linear regression channel that I have drawn on the daily or weekly chart. We are still in an uptrend. We tested it and came back down. So if we look at it on a daily chart, as you can see, um, the 500 company, the NASDAQ, the Russell, uh, and the Dow Joe Industrial Average has stayed inside the linear regression channel. And as you can see, we retested the simple moving average. I have uh, a couple of them on there. I have a 5, an 18, a 50, a 116, and a 200 SMA. If I right click on it, it'll tell you what it is. So remember, the 50 is my yellow one. My 18 is green and red. My 116 simple moving average is an uh, orangey burnt color, and my 200 SMA is in white color. So we are still in a linear regression channel. We had tested this prior, you know, uh, channel a couple of times, and eventually we retested it right here, and we got a little bounce back into the 18. Most people use a 20-day, which are right on it. In order to continue higher, we have to hold on to this. And what I want to do is go to a four hour chart to show you how I did the FIB so you can understand what I'm looking for. We had consolidation for a couple of weeks and eventually we broke this prior high. We went sideways for a little bit, look below. We have these two professional gaps on the, on the combination of uh, the S&P, once again, the NASDAQ, the Russell and the Dow. As you can see at this gap here and this gap here, could it be possible that we refill the gap and go back into the prior concept? It is possible. So we looked into the channel. We fell down on Thursday, Friday. We had an, uh, an annual high look above, then fall back in the prior range of the prior week. This was the Monday. But if you look, this was Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday. And if you look, we retested that area and we fell a little bit further in that last two weeks range we tested that area and came back to close right above the 50 but unfortunately we did not close on the 18 sma we are between the zero channel and the 38.2 the 50 feb and the 61a in order to continue higher, we have to close above the 38, the 50, and the 61, come back to the 18 or the 20 SMA and hold this channel. If we lose that support and the 38, we will look for the 23, the 38, the 50, and the 61. Usually the 38 and 116 usually will catch up if we get a bounce here. If not, look for the 61, and this is the prior gap on these two areas right here. As you can see, this is the gap and that 116 will eventually move higher to meet that gap and the prior gap here. If we lose it, that would be basically the 50 or the 61.8 to fill the gap. We have an advanced decline line when the RSI started to expand above 50 and we had the ADX DMI study on a momentum indicator shift higher. This was the first move high. Then we broke out, then we consolidated, broke out again. Now we're coming back into that consolidation. If we hold this consolidation in the profile, or do we hold the one at the bottom? So let's go now, break it down one by one by taking a look at the MDX. And if I go on the daily chart, you will see it why I have put it up there. I will go. We can see that the prior high on that annual was way down there, and we had an extension fit from here to here. We got the extension, the 161 right here, which we fell through, and eventually had to re-anchor my Fibonacci from here 
to here, instead of using the NASDAQ um, NDX, I'm going to use the NQ, and you can see my Fibonacci, the machine had grabbed this prior high and this low, and it's telling me my 38 is around 10,310, and the 50 SMA is here. If the 50 SMA is lost in the 18 simple moving average or the 20, and we fall back underneath that 18 simple moving average, but we closed in that area so far, we are intact unless I do lose my 50 SMA, then it won't be viable, we'll fall back all the way down there. Let's just use the ND, uh, the NQ, so that way you see it. I usually use the major uh, E-mini contracts that way, or the NASDAQ contracts, or the Russell. As you can see, I have these two channel. We have not tested it, but we still have the 50 right there, and that's the 116, and if I go to the four hour, you'll see it there as well. And this is the four hour, five day rain. Oops. This is the high, and this is the low for the week. And we retested the breakout. Do we hold here in the 200 SMA, continue back to the 38, 50, and 61.8 FIB? Or do we fall and fall back to the 23.61 Fibonacci on the other side, which are the extensions down to this side? So that way you are aware of it. The NASDAQ consists of Apple, Amazon, Googles of the world, the Facebooks of the world, the Shopify, the Microsofts the PayPal's of the world, the Tesla's of the world. So ba basically, we got to like, take a look at those instruments later, so that way you can get a better idea of what we can do. Let's move down to the YN. And I'll use the same thing, just the four hour chart. That way you don't have to worry about the channel and the daily. This we almost hit an annual high. We came back from the prior week. This is the, you know, the Tuesday, the Monday push down, the Tuesday and Wednesday they push up, look above, Tuesday fell down in the range of the prior week that gave us the breakout here. And this was the prior two weeks range bound. We retested that area where the most of the volume and the profile is, and we bounced back up, but we're not able to clear the 38.2 Feb going up. We have to keep an eye on the 38, 50, and 61. The 50 is right there. The 116 is there and the 200 SMA, and this is the major channel here. If we end up losing this area, look for the other side of the 23, 38, 50, and 61 extensions. Let's take a look at now the RTY. And now we'll go down on the daily as well on the RTY for one season to show you. Remember from uh, the June, August uh, of 1600, we've been consolidating going side range. We, look, we tried to look to that area a couple of times. Every time we went to the 1600, we barely made, we did not make it there. And we eventually fell back down inside that range. So what I'm gonna do is go to the daily to show you how it looks like. And this is what Russell is giving us a clue unless it does lose that area. Um, let's just zoom down. If you notice, this was the annual high that we eventually fell in February to March 23rd, then we consolidated going back and forth. Here we had side action for a while before, I mean, we broke the channel by time, then eventually consolidated, broke that downtrend channel trend and broke up. Now we are going sideways. Does it look like this area or this area in order to continue higher or not? But remember, this channel is broken by time, not by trend. So that if we zoom here, we go to the four hour, we can see that the FIB from high to low, our extensions is down here, and our upper range is up in the other side. So we do we clear the 38, 50, 61 to continue back to the 1600, or do we fall through the 38, don't come back through the 50, fall all the way to the 50 Fibonacci in the 61, that would be around the 1450 range. Let's see, but remember the 1500 is very mental number and we are holding, we retested the 50 and bounced off it, but we closed right underneath the 1535. But that's an important area. If you look at this move up, this is inside this range. Do we stay in it and fall this gap, which we had is already no longer there. We can remove it. We still have this gap here on the Russell. Let's take a look at the ES. And the ES is in the same situation as the NASDAQ. We have this linear regression here and this one here. As you can see, I've anchored two of them. Let me zoom down a little bit. 
I've anchored the, you know, this is the down move in March, uh, fe then February, March, then we rallied back up and I connected those two channels in order to continue higher. We are still in that linear regression channel going up, but we eventually broke, we can, you know, if this one is broken by time and we fall through that channel, that's your 15, we are holding right on the 18 simple moving average or the 20 SMA. We had those two days push us slower. That's your 50 and the 61 extension and the 38. And the other side is your 38, 50, and 61. Do we continue and go back to the prior high? But remember the annual high was uh, 33, 97 and a half, which we looked back into and closed at the 34, 15, but it's a very important area that I would keep an eye on is a 34, 93, 95 area. And on the way down is your 33, uh, 93, 75 or 97 area would be important. If we lose this low from Friday, this would be setting us the tone to the downside, the 50 SMA, the channel, and eventually to the 61.8 and this consolidation before the breakup or we come back into this range and stay bullish on the daily chart, which is a 3047. Remember, we can have two things, a retracement of a 3%, a 4%, 5 6 7% over time, then continue higher. That will be healthy for the market. I'm not trying to be bearish. We're going to trade what we see in front of us. And that's the most important thing. Don't listen to the news out there. I don't watch news. I don't watch the TV box because whether it's Bloomberg, CNBC, Fox, whatever news that talks about the market or the New York Stock Exchange, all these guys, whether they are analysts, uh, they run a hedge fund, they don't look at technicals as day traders as we do. We look at technicals, we look at supply and demand zone, we look at volume, we look at momentum indicators and moving averages. And instead of saying, hey, maybe the trend is changing, we had two days down, we looked below and came back down and bounced off, uh, you know, back to the 18 simple moving average or the 20 SMA. And I looked at you like our linear regression channel. They looked at you like, what are you talking about? So remember, I want you to learn to trade technicals and trade, you know, uh, studies instead of tra trading a, just a chart or an opinion. Or if you think something's, you know, bad is going on in the market, if you take a look at the overall market, things have recovered since March 23rd. And look where we are on an annual high with a reset, with a small little reset. Let's take a look at now GC. GC is a chart. This is the two gaps we have. We had a prior gap here, which we already filled. We fell down. We went back up, came back down. I didn't re-anchor my fibs. I kept this one here and this one here because we've been in consolidation in that side. We haven't been able to clear the 38.2 fib, as you can see here from this recent high and low. We've been side action in order to compress and come out of this compression and that symmetrical triangle. We do not want to lose that 50 simple moving average or this channel, which is, you know, mental 1900 will end up coming back to the support here, which I had the prior oval here. I kept it. This is the major one between these two caps to find support at the 61.8 and get a bounce because you can see that we are in a symmetrical triangle trying to hold on to. If we clear this upper, you know, uh, 1970 area, 1965 and break this channel by time and break that 1980 eventually will come back to the 61. That's a 2005, 2007. Eventually, we can continue higher to the upside. So remember, trade what you see, not what you think. And this is why gold is showing that way. Let's take a look at CL. CL is in a similar situation in the last uh, couple of weeks. It was range bound between 43.50 and 41.50. And eventually, last week, we had a uh, no follow through and we fell down on Thursday and Friday and we were not able to come back to that 4150. As you notice, we went, looked up and came back in and fell down. And I anchored the weekly fibs from here to here to show you, hey, is it possible that we can fall further? Yes, but I kept the prior you know, highs and lows of the prior week down here. But eventually those fibs will be no longer valid. I have to look at the other ones. 
almost symmetrical so i'm going to remove this one this is the last five day price action what i can do is right click on it you can see the one day two day three day four day five day and this is why i got them anchored that way to see where we can head and if there's going to be more weakness i will look for the 38 the 50 and the 61 for an eventually bounce coming back up and if we hold here and we clear the 38.2 then we clear the 50 61 then we go back up inside the other prior range <clears throat> that's uh, cl let's take a look at btc and i'll on um, on Apple, Amazon, and NAESs. Um, if you take a look here, we had consolidation. And eventually, we had a professional gap at the 9,000 to 10,000, and this was the range that we broke out of this area, broke out of this area, went up. We created some kind of a shoulder, head and shoulder, a minor one here. That's the short, that's the head, that's the outer shoulder, and we eventually we broke through that 11,170. 11, we fell back down. We, re, we fell through the 18 on the daily and the 50 SMA, which just closed right underneath it by a hair. And if you can see my zero line is here, in order to continue higher, we have to clear the 38.250 and 61 in order to continue in this major channel on the daily chart, or we will eventually fall lower. In order to clear, you have to clear this breakdown and this candle here which shows us that this channel eventually over time is getting higher and this and the price is supposed to shift if it shifts higher it has to come back to this channel in order to break up or it will act as resistance and fall back down so that's btc and i'll show you how it looks like on the four hour <clears throat> the four I don't know why this mouse is just acting very weird. A little bit more. Okay. As you can see, the overnight is the gray area, the trading hour. This is the breakout. If this is considered around the top, and this is the shoulder, this is the head, this is the shoulder we fell through, does it hold this professional gap and consolidate here in order to continue higher or break back up and go back up? And this is the channel coming up from way back there. Let's take a look at now Apple. Hmm. We draw a channel from here to here. As you can see, we are intact on the uptrend. So let's just do that. I'll use that on all my other ins all the ones we're going to look at. Apple. The reason why I'm looking at Apple because it consists of the Nasdaq 100 as well as the S&P 500. So it's holding this major channel here. It's still in an uptrend. It closed right on the 20 SMA. This is my 18 right under it. We have the Fibonacci retracement from here. We'll zoom into this area so you guys can see it a little bit more better. We looked up. We fell back down below. The 28 and the 22 this is a very important area for apple to hold that 14 15 area if it falls through here it loses the 50 then the 38.2 won't be uh won't support it and the channel eventually will come back to the 61 to that area of the 88 before you know because if you take it because you know it's split four to one here you have to look at the price and the overall the prior where it can go back to in order to come back up so that's Apple, Amazon. Amazon is in a similar situation. I had this major channel, but if I connect it now to the nearest high and low, you can see that uh, this major channel has eventually broken down in Amazon. But where did Amazon close? Right on the channel as well as the 18 simple moving average or the 20. And as you can see here, my Fibonacci's are still underneath. Let's just zoom in one more time. As you can see, the 38 uh, uh, Amazon closed right above it. It's underneath the 50, and that's underneath the 61.8. We retested it on Friday, but fell down. We caught our, uh, our strengths back at the 50 SMA and bounced back to the 18. So in order for Amazon to stay uh, stronger, it has to stay above this consolidation where the breakout was. And these one, two, 
three, four, and eventually broke up. If it's going to fall, then we'll look for the backside at a 38, 50, and 61 percent fit. Let's just go now take a look at uh, Facebook. Facebook is in a similar situation. You can see the major channel here. That's your Fibonacci. You're right on the 38. You're above the 18 simple moving average and the 50 simple moving average. In order to lose it, you have to keep an eye on this candle on Friday. Do we, in order to continue lower, do we lose that and go back to the 61.8? Or do we get a bounce off the 38, 50, 61 to continue higher? Let's take a look at Google. Google is in a similar situation. I know I have it zoomed in. You can see that this uh, linear regression channel, we eventually broke it a little bit. We looked below it and came back up. You can see where it's coming from. I'll just zoom down one more time. As you can see, I connected it from here. But if I connect, you know, a Google from here or I connect it from here, you can see that the major channel is way up there. But if I connect it from here to this one, you can see that this channel is still broken, similar situation. But the linear regression channel is holding us up. We fell down. We bounced back to the 18 and the 20. We're right on the 38.25. That's your 50. That's your 61. And that's your support. In order for uh, Google to fall lower, we have to keep an eye on that low and that 50 SMA. Then the, probably the other support would be around the 50 or the 61.8 in this channel to get a bounce off it. But if we clear the 38, look for the this one here. 650 and 61 then to continue higher let's take a look at netflix and netflix if you can see it people are looking at it are we still on lockdown are we going to go back to work or not and things we if you notice we have a linear regression channel i can re-anchor this one a little bit more cleaner remove drawing grab this one right here because i usually don't anchor them every week i just look at the technical and the setups as you notice, we broke it a little bit. We tested the 50 and the channel and the 18, and we closed right above that channel because on the daily chart, you can see it's being consolidation, looked up, came back down, got around the top. If this is the handle, do we continue higher or do we fall back in? Let's just zoom in here to show you where the fit I drew it from. We took the nearest high for the last five days in the low, and we can see that the, on the weekly chart, it tried to come back to the prior breakout and that consolidation in here, here, push up, come back down, retest it. If we end up losing the 38.2 Feb, look for the backside of the slower candle and the channel losing it. That would be your support. Then you'll get to 38%, 50 and 61. If it fall breaks up above the 38, the 50 and the 61, then look for the upside in Netflix. Let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla is going to be probably either added to the S&P 500 or not. People are talking about it. If it's going to be added, remember, there's a lot of companies out there uh, that don't own uh, Tesla as well as hedge funds or mutual funds. Because if they do add it to the S&P, some people would have to go out and buy Tesla. If uh, it doesn't get added to the S&P, it may cause a reaction on the opposite side. So I'm not trying to tell you to short it or to long. It. Let's see what the technicals do give us. If you notice in the last two pushes, we consolidated, went a little high, consolidated, pushed higher, consolidated, pushed higher. And now Tesla is looking back in after the five to one split. Does it hold this $357 and the 61.8? We're right on the 18 and the 20 SMA. It pushed itself. This is the major gap in the 50 simple moving average is my yellow line right here. I mean, my yellow moving average in the uh, channel is right here. Do we lose that in order to come back to the second support and get the prior consolidation in this area to continue higher? Remember, we're going to trade what we see, not what we think. And uh, the, we let's see what next week holds for us. And that's the way I want you to think about it. So this is some of the major equities I posted. I didn't go through Shopify, um, PayPal, Lucky Martin, there's too much to cover, but I want to show you a couple of things in the bond market and the overall. So I want you to be, whenever you look at the market, strategy, be strategic, be open-minded mentally, and just 
don't look at the short term one day, two day, five day, or you know, two week, three week outlook. Always look for the six month outlook, a year outlook where we can be from here, two years down the line, three years down the line. That will give you a better idea what can happen in the major markets in order to help us. And you can, you know, read through those notes right here. This is the S&P 500 from 1980 to 2020, showing you two major uh, apex on the RSI where we peaked in January 18 and 1983 and August 19, uh, 19 of 2009 when we had the real estate bubble. Each scenario we have recovered quite a bit. And we have the same scenario here in 2020 in September, August. In order, do we continue higher or do we reset a little bit like it's 3%, 5%, 6%, 7% and go back to continue higher? This is what I would look at on the short term, whether it's on the, looking at the bond market for one week up to uh, two months, or we look at the S&P from one week all the way to two months to see the overall uh, minute, uh, rate of return, you know, from 1983 is 2.3 and from nine, 2009 it was 9.1 and the bond market did about 1%. If we look at a three months, one year outlook, three year outlook, because you know, at that time, the Federal Reserve Board, uh, Bernie was pushing money, then Yellen came in and now we have Powell. And you notice that the bond market did over three years, 40% and five years, 42%. And if you look at the stock market, the S&P from 1983 and 2009, we had the average about in five years, 72 to 97 percent, an average of 85 percent compounding rate comparing the bonds to the S&P 500. And this is from LPL research. This shows you the 1930-54 S&P all the way to 2020, what the average rate of return and how high it has moved. The S&P 500, this is taking a look at a five month outlook, three months, you know, you have a 0.6 or a 0.3 low and as high as, you know, minus 4.9, you know, loss and an average rate of return medium is between 3.1 to 4. If we look at a six months rate of return between the highs and lows, we have a minus seven. But if you can see, we have an average 5.9 to 5.8 percent in a 12 month period, what the outlook would be. No one can determine, but we have an average rate of return of 12.8 and a median of 11.4%. So usually trade what you see, not what you think. And this is uh, taking a look at the NASDAQ 100 in relationship to the bond, you know, TLT or uh, that way it's a 20 year ETF or if you like it, the ZB, that's the 30 year and the ZN is the 10 year. That what has done the NASDAQ, it has recovered quite a bit. It is in the reset, but in the overall, has it failed the prior breakouts? No, it's still continuing higher. Until then, then this is the question where I would question if the market's still going to be bullish or bearish. Let's take a look at the ES before we go, so you guys can get a better feel of it. And what I'm going to do on going from the daily, I'm going to go to the monkey bars or the profile to show you how we can look at it. We can go to style. In the charts, you can go from, can, I mean, the monkey bars right here, from standard to monkey bars. This is showing you only three month daily chart. This is basically the monthly chart of every month that we do, but we did the weekly chart for this one to know where the retracements are. So instead of daily, we're gonna go to time frame, and we're gonna go, instead of monthly, we're gonna go, oops, intraday. Instead of daily, we're gonna go to, Let's say 30 days. We're going to go to four hour if we can do four hour. Thirty days. Daily. Oh, this is just a okay, intraday, thirty days. Four hour. Push up then. As you can see, I mean, this was the prior push higher. We got a nice clean wick. We have empty space between here and here. And you can see that the time was spent up here compared to the POC when it moved lower. This is a very important area to keep an eye on on Tuesday after we come back from the labor weekend. And this is the Friday action. As you can see, we pushed lower 
in order to continue back up we have to stay above the 38.2 and we closed right here at the 34.14 area but the poc was a little bit higher and we never closed lower but this was a consolidation and a long time frame to continue higher so if i go from four hour chart just to go to time frame and i go you know instead of 30 days i just go 20 days and i go instead of four hour just like a 30 minute and you'll see the difference in the chart see the gaps here this is a very important area that we have to keep an eye on the gaps if we come back to that 35 uh 20 area and the 34 uh 93 95 area this is a gap this is an empty when everybody said get me out you know on the look above and fall because basically it was just a sell-off and the poc shifted lower and the same time here if you can look you know we opened here and we eventually closed down here we looked way down near we got a clean low but eventually we have to come back and fix do we have to fix here no we don't have to but let's see what the market gives us in the overall this is the value area high that's the value area low that's where the most contracts were uh were sold and this is the way the most time was spent the green one sometimes they do match sometimes they don't it depends on the momentum if the momentum is bullish or the momentum is bearish in order for the market to continue it has recovered the 33 97.50 which is the annual high from before but this is going to be a very important area if we cannot clear the 34 39 the 50 area and then eventually the 34 93 area 93 50 93.75 if we cannot get through that this may be considered a short then eventually go back to the 33 97 quarter this is a very important area for me the 93.75 i would look into it if it's going to stay bullish or bearish if we fall through there i consider this to be bearish hope you enjoyed this video i look forward to seeing you on discord twitter or at solstice atr take care